All right. Welcome, everybody. We're going to talk about approximating the definite integral today. So right now, what we want to focus on first is what the definite integral is, and then we'll focus on some approximation techniques. The main thing that we'll notice is that we've been talking about this here, which we're going to call an indefinite integral. That's what we have been calling it. This indefinite integral is really an antiderivative or a family of antiderivatives because we can add our little plus c there. That's what this thing is. Over here we've got one difference, or really two. It's these two things here. We're going to call these the limits of integration. And our definition down here tells us what this means. When we talk about a definite integral, what we're really talking about is an area. Uh, we talk about area under the curve a lot, so let me try and draw out what I mean. So if this is our axes uh, and we've got our regular standard function that I always draw here, we have two x values, one here and one over here. And the main idea is that this integral is really the area between our curve and our x-axis here. So if we were to shade all this in and figure out the size of this shape, that's what our indefinite integral, that's what this right here actually is finding. So this is a bit interesting because we're not looking at another kind of function thing or anything like that. These indefinite integrals are just going to be values because they're going to represent sizes of shapes. We can find some of these things geometrically. Uh, for something like this, this one's a pretty easy one. We've got this constant function, f of x equals 4. It's floating along here, horizontal. It's a nice straight line. We're going to look from x equals 0 up to x equals 5. And if we shade in this area, we can tell already that this is really just a rectangle. And so this area here is length times width which in our case is 5 times 4. So our area is 20 and that's what this integral then is. So constant functions are really easy to find this way because we're just looking at areas of rectangles. Similarly, with something like this, this linear function here, we just have a nice little triangle. It's going from this x value of 0 all the way up to an x value of 3. So if we color in our shape now, we've got a nice triangle, and we know that we're looking at half the base times the height. Our base is 3 units, our height is 6, and so we're looking at half times 3 times 6, which is 9 units squared. So with these types of functions, we can find these things just using some geometric shapes. At worst, maybe if this linear function was shifted up a couple of units, we might have to cut it into like a rectangle and then a triangle on top and find the area of those two things and put them together. But that's not going to be a big deal. The problem for us is going to happen when we run into these types of functions. <clears throat> Excuse me. A function like this that doesn't have a straight line now, if we're looking for this area under our curve, we've got this kind of weird, almost triangular shape, but it's got that curved edge on the top. It's really hard to find areas of shapes with curved edges. Um, straight edge shapes, we can find areas really easily, but with these curved edges, it's a little bit harder. So what we have to do is try and figure out ways of approximating the size of this here. And there's a couple of ways of doing it. I'll give you a chance to pause the video, think about how you could approximate the size of this thing, and keep an eye on the fact that we are approximating this. We're not going to be finding an actual area right yet. So give yourself a second to think about how that might go. All right, the common thing that people think of is that they can think of drawing a line straight across. And if we look at this orange shape now, here, we've got an approximation of a triangle with a width of 2 and a height of 4. And so we could find the area of that triangle and say, OK, it's not perfect. It's a little too big, but it's a decent enough approximation. The problem with this is that it's not really easy to make this approximation better. And so what we want to do is focus on a way of 
using some normal standard shapes and hopefully having a way of making this approximation I don't know, go okay, I guess. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to split this thing up. We're going to draw a couple of rectangles like this and like this. And if I color in these rectangles, you'll notice that it's too much area that's being colored in, right? This thing is too big. We've got all this extra space here that's getting colored in. So maybe this wasn't a great approximation. So this is a really cool thing that we can do with these rectangular approximations is we'll say, let's make more rectangles. Let's divide these in half. And we'll look at this rectangle and divide that in half. And we'll pick another one here. And let me grab my eraser and get rid of some pieces for us. And now we've got a bit better of an approximation. See how our error, the extra area that we're measuring, is a lot smaller here. And if we wanted to make this better and better and better, then we can just keep on adding in rectangles by making them a little bit smaller. And that's our general idea. We're going to be able to approximate these things geometrically by looking at a couple of different ways of putting in some rectangles. I'm going to pull up a little GeoGebra applet. This is available to you on Canvas to mess around with, so take a look at this when I pull it up. All right, so here's our little GeoGebra applet. This is what we've got. We've got a function right here, uh, negative x squared plus 5. And you can see right now we're approximating it with two rectangles, these shaded in red rectangles. Our actual area here that we're supposed to be measuring is about 7 and a third. And what we've got, we're calling this the left sum. I'll explain why in a second. But what we've got is an area of 9. It's too big. Now, if I switch back and forth between a left and a right sum, I'm sure that you guys will see the difference. Our left sum looks like this. Our right sum looks like this. And again, the main point that we're looking at is where the height of our rectangles touches our graph. Here, the height touches our graph right on the right side of each of these rectangles. But when I switch it over to the left, it starts on the left and moves out that way. That's the main difference. We've got two different approximation strategies. They give us two different answers. And then we also have a midpoint sum. We're not going to focus on it too much in this class. Business calculus, we really don't need midpoint sums that much. But just like you might think, they cross through in the middle. These are really nice because you'll notice that part of it underestimates our curve, and then the other part of it overestimates our curve. And here again, this rectangle has an underestimation here and an overestimation here. So it kind of offsets itself. You'll notice that right off the bat, these midpoint sums are just better approximations of the actual area. Let's go back and look at our left sum. What we're going to do is we're going to take our number of rectangles and we're going to increase them. And you'll notice that as we add rectangles, that sum down to 7.8776 now, it keeps getting closer and closer to our actual area. And we can add a whole bunch of these rectangles until we have like an infinite number of these. That's what we're really going to do in calculus. Uh, but right now we've got 75. We have a lot of rectangles. This looks very close. 7.386 is very close to 7.33. Uh, and we can see that there's not a lot of extra area being measured. It's just this kind of jagged edge above our graph here. Similarly, we can do the same thing with the right sums. We can grab our number of rectangles here and increase that. And we'll notice again, we start losing that white space underneath our graph as we add our number of rectangles up. It looks like this does a really good approximation. If we zoom in on this thing, you can hear me scrolling my mouse and zooming in, we'll notice that there is some extra space under here. These are tiny little rectangles that are measuring this, uh, but it's not that noticeable. So this is essentially what we're going to do. We're going to look at these rectangles with maybe two, three, four rectangles. We're going to measure the area of each of these by looking at the width and looking at the height and calculating our area for each of them. And then we'll add all those up. With rectangles, areas are super easy to calculate. So this is why we like using rectangles. And also, it's really easy to add more rectangles and kind of generalize it a bit more. So let's take a look at some actual examples. We'll build a left sum and a right sum. I'll show you how that all works. And then we should be good to go. All right, before we get too far into it, just a couple of different definitions and things to notice. When we talk about n, we're going to be talking about the number of rectangles we divide our region into. So if we're dividing it up into four rectangles, n is going to be four. Delta x 
It's going to be the change in x values for each of our little rectangles. So these are going to be widths of rectangles. So when we go to calculate areas, these are going to be really important to notice. These delta x's are going to be b minus a, or if you remember, those are our limits of integration. This b minus a is really the total width of the whole shape. And we're going to divide it into n rectangles. What we're assuming is that the width of each of these is the same. We're going to take the whole width, divide it up into however many rectangles we care about, and that'll be the width of each rectangle. And then we have these left approximations, L versus R, um, our left versus right. And again, that's all talking about where our rectangles bump up against the curve to measure the height. When we talk about these approximations, we're going to talk about what approximation, what side, left versus right, and we'll also talk about the number of rectangles. So we'll have L sub N and R sub N that we're going to look at. Maybe today what we'll do is look at like a left four sum, and maybe also we can look at a right four sum. So we'll write these numbers here, the number of rectangles, as little subscripts. So let's take a look. I've already drawn this one out, not very well, but I've drawn it. Uh, we're going to approximate the area under x squared plus 1, that's approximately what this looks like, from 1 to 3 using four rectangles. So if we're going to do something like this, we're going to really try and start with a left sum. So we're really trying to find L4. This is going to be a sum of four different areas of four different rectangles. So we're going to take all the areas of these rectangles, these four right here, and we're going to add them up. To do that, we need a delta x. That's going to be the width of our rectangles. That's going to be our b minus a, so 3 minus 1, the total width of all this, divided by the number of rectangles, 4. So we're looking at 2 over 4, or half. This is the width of each of our rectangles. To find the heights of our rectangles, it's a little harder you're going to notice that we're finding heights based on function values. We're looking at where our rectangle touches our graph right there, and right there, and there, and there. To check these out, we really need to have the x values. So we're going to take a look at a number line. This is like what I like to do to figure these out. We're going to go from 1 up to 3. We're going to divide it in half, and then divide it in half again. So now we've got one, two, three, four rectangles. And now we can figure out what our x values are here pretty well. All right, so if we're looking at a left sum, then we're looking at all the x values on the left. So that's the one for our first rectangle, our second rectangle, our third rectangle, and our fourth rectangle. So here's what L4 is really going to look like. It's going to be the base of my first rectangle times the height of my first rectangle. And I'm going to use my function to find. And then I'm going to do the same thing for all my other rectangles. So I've got half times f of 3 halves plus half times f of 2 plus half times f of 5 halves. We can figure out what these are by just plugging these values into our functions. So we've got half times 1 squared plus 1, so that's 2. Half times uh, 3 halves squared is 9 half, or nine over 4, sorry, plus 1 is going to be 13 fourths. 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5, so this is half times 5. And then half times uh, f of 5 halves. 5 halves squared is 25 over 4, plus 1 is 29 over 4. And then we can just add everything up. When we add this up, we end up with 8.75. So that's our left approximation here. Let's do the same thing, but we're going to look at a right side approximation. So I've already got this thing drawn out. You're going to notice that our delta x is still going to be the same thing. It's still 3 minus 1 over 4. So the widths of all these rectangles are a half. The main difference is the x values that we're using. We're still going from 1 up to 3, but now, so we'll still take our 1 up to 3, divide it in half, divide it in half again. But now you'll notice we're looking at all the right points to define the heights of our rectangles. So instead, our right sum 
looks like half times f of 3 halves plus half times f of 2 plus half times f of 5 halves plus half times f of 3. Most of these we already calculated. Let's see, it was 13 fourths, 5, and 29 over 4. Those were our function values there. So a half, oops, times 13 fourths uh, plus a half times 5 plus a half times 29 over 4 plus a half times 3 squared is 9 plus 1 is 10. And so again, we can go ahead and just add all these things up. And when we do that, we end up with 12.75. So that's the area that we're approximating using four rectangles. Now, neither of our answers are actually the area under the curve. They're both wrong. They've got some extra error. But for now, that's a good approximation. We can play with that for a little bit. Um, the setup is always going to be the same thing. We're only going to care about left and right sums. So the main idea is we're going to take a look at uh, what happens when we split these things up into however many rectangles and add those areas together. That's everything that we've got for right now, guys. Thanks.